So what's up, James? How are you doing today? My back hurts. <laughs> Why does your back hurt? I'm old. So am I. What'd you do? Got old. Did you do something to hurt your back? Got old. Oh, well, I'm old too. It's different old. My knee hurts like I'm that old. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> How was your day? It was pretty good. Did arm workout. <sighs> Finally, pain free from uh, all the issues I've been dealing with. And, so. and how did you get pain free exactly? Oh, so. NTX AMT. Sorry, honey. I'm put it She's amazing. Right here. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I have been hurting for unknown reasons probably since July. One session with her, and I've been able to hit three workouts and not feel any pain. That's good. Yeah, so apparently I have some sort of fascia problem where it attacks my muscles because it thinks I'm injured after I work out instead of just doing normal stuff so I had like marble size build up not like they I thought they were muscle knots and I was trying to roll them out but it was actually just built up fascia or however you say it <laughs> yeah so I was um, making all of my muscles apparently like they were glued together so like I'd be massaging like the back of this shoulder and I could feel it like in my rib cage and I'm like those muscles don't connect why yeah so that's apparently why because it was so it had attacked so many things just and built up like everything was stuck together yeah I don't even want to know we, how bad my shit is. we spent the entire hour and a half on my upper back I don't even I'm, I'm just gonna let her do it my bicep I don't even feel like putting her through my back <laughs> no you gotta let her so bad. it was and like I'm going, uh, so I have a follow up in two weeks and then we'll go to once a month to kind of for maintenance until, and just kind of monitor and see how everything goes, but pain levels and stuff, but do That's it, good. do it, worth it. The first time I've had somebody like, this is actually your problem because I've had this problem and I've gotten work done mm -hmm. and I know I've had knots and I have horribly just, I'm just tight in general, but she actually took the time to like, help me explain what was wrong and it mm -hmm. wasn't like a oh I'm gonna massage this half your back and do the exact same thing on this side no it was we're working the problems wherever they are and we're fixing it all mm -hmm. and as she fixed every like it just oh my gosh I stood up straight my shoulders didn't feel like this for the first time in months wow. like my sh I had winged both of my shoulder blades were winged <laughs> I couldn't even do a lat spread I couldn't even engage my right lat for like a month <laughs> It's been rough. Oh no, we're all blurry. Are we? Oh, there we are. Okay. Hey, we weren't too damn far. Well, I'm, I move around a lot when I talk. It was going to end our focus last time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We'll get this eventually. We'll figure it out. Well, I'll get a better camera at some point. Yeah. Well, y'all subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Get YouTube we'll... check. Get the best camera. 4K everything. <laughs> MacBook editing. You know, all the YouTube things. Yeah, I'll let you do all that. I'm I'm not tech savvy. I'm not good anyway. It's yeah. my thing. Yeah. I'm a little bit YouTube crazy. So. I never watched YouTube growing up, so um, I've never been. It wasn't on. We well, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. I never got into YouTube when YouTube was a thing. Like I hated. I, to. I hated watching YouTube. But people would send me, "Oh, watch this video. It's so funny or so cool or whatever." This music video. No. I'd watch like two seconds of it and be like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't have a choice because, so, fun fact, when I worked at my college, I worked in IT, mm -hmm. I found what's called the end of the internet. So when you open your laptop, go to Google, and you do this, and you do this, because you literally have searched every possible thing in your mm -hmm. head that you could think to search, and you're just like, what the hell now? That's the when you found the end of the internet. So I started going to YouTube and like subscribing to channels, mm -hmm. and then because it's constant content, oh, that makes that's sense. how I. And then when there's nothing broke, mm -hmm. when you do IT somewhere, you literally have nothing to do for hours on end. That's true. And we used to keep most of the stuff fixed. So yeah, we talking about like four or five hours straight before I had to leave the office to do something. So I'm just on YouTube just. Doop. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm like a YouTube head, and I don't watch pretty much anything normal TV ish at all. I canceled my TV months ago. I don't watch TV. I haven't had Netflix in probably a year. Mental health, by the way, we need a 
whole episode. Solid, yeah. I'm gonna, um, but to help out my mental health and just overall, um, I canceled my TV, uh, Netflix. I, I have HBO still just because I kind of want to watch the Game of Thrones. But... <laughs> damn it, camera. Um, you act right today, damn it. I'm just going to sit here and stare at the camera. It's going to be super awkward the whole time. No. Um, but yeah, so I canceled all that. So I haven't watched... My entertainment is... If I'm bored... I do play video games. But if I'm bored and like would go to the TV... Mm -hmm. Instead now, I go read a, a book. Um, or I do something creative. Because I'm not a creative person. So I'm forcing myself to be more... What? Why are you looking at me like that? You're like, not a creative person. I'm Have really you not. seen your hair? Okay, I don't. This is. I go to somebody and they do this for me. No, no, no. But the creativity came in the fact of you wanting to do that. My older sister's a hairstylist. Matter of fact, your office space. Creativity. Okay. That ain't no boring ass office. That's true. It has. It's just pictures and plants. Okay. No. Okay. No. Fine. Okay. I'm trying to be more creative and get better with my creativity. So I've been forcing myself to do more creative things um, and get back into drawing and stuff. Just it cutting out TV and limiting my time. I only I will post on my Instagram mm -hmm. and I will spend only two hours like going through, looking at other people's stuff, commenting, just going through. But after that, like I'm done until the weekend like I during the week it's limited and the amount of less anxiety I've had less anxiety less stress mm -hmm. and less brain fog less exhaustion and I've just felt better overall it's just cutting out TV like just that monotonous thing that you don't even think about yeah I turned off my notifications on Facebook I did that too. And it immediately made me feel. Because mm -hmm. I started realizing the app will notify you of stuff that has nothing to do with you just to get you to open the app. Yep. I'm not doing it. Yeah, and they, uh, I turned all those off of Facebook. All of my Instagram is silenced unless you're... Um, I do have certain DMs that I'll get a notification for, but mm -hmm. only at certain times. And my phone goes on Do Not Disturb at 9 p.m. at night. I'm normally not even home <laughs> until like 10 or 11, but mm -hmm. at 9, I'm like, okay, I'm just done with the world until tomorrow. I don't think you're wrong with it. I don't either. It's helped my mental health. That's really all that matters. But, um, so we did have some questions. <laughs> Awkward transition. <laughs> um, so I got a lot of questions um, about meal prep. And honestly, this is one of my favorite topics. Meal prep and nutrition. <laughs> I love it. So, um, everybody, everybody wants to know how, how do you meal prep? What do you do? How do you get motivated? What, how do you eat? And honestly, go just Google or search through Instagram bodybuilders and anybody who eats like a healthy uh, fitness diet, style diet. Mm -hmm. We're all eating the same foods. Literally. All of us are eating the same same foods. We are eating healthy foods in appropriate portions for our goals. Mm -hmm. It is not a diet. It is not a magic trick. We are literally, that is all we are doing. We are eating properly healthy foods in proper proportions. It is so simple, but it's been so overcomplicated with here's your 70 million different styles of diets. It's not that complicated. Less calories in, then calories out is going to cause you to lose weight. It doesn't matter if that's uh, keto or Adkins or Weight Watchers or any other fad diet. It doesn't matter. There is no, it's, it's amount of calories in versus amount of calories out. If you so want to go back to that. It's all it is. It, it doesn't matter how you achieve that. Right. You can achieve that however you choose. Pick clean, healthy foods, whole foods, no preservatives. Don't go in your frozen food section if you can help it. Shop around the outside of the grocery store. Stay out of the aisles. Yes. Out, outside of like rice and I get sauces. Yeah. Out of the aisle. But other than that, it's awesome. Yeah. But fresh produce, non-frozen proteins, dairy, all of that stuff. Just shop in that. Eat 
you don't even have to weigh your food to get started. Just start picking healthy foods and eating until you're satisfied. Mm -hmm. Don't eat until you're stuffed or you're full where you're like, oh, I can't take another bite or oh, if I have another bite, I might get uncomfortable. No. Eat slower. Eat slower. Eat slower. Yes, that's a good point. I, I forget I about that. Shit. Really? Yeah. Because I eat, and it's funny because I point, Randy was talking about me one day. Well, Randy's back there. That's why I'm pointing out. <laughs> but he was like, he was like, God, man, you still eat? I said, I eat like a free man. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I've never been in the military. I've never been incarcerated. I've been around people that were both. They scarf that shit and they taste it later. Uh, like I'm free. Military. I scarf, well, military and large family. If you didn't scarf it and get seconds, you weren't getting seconds. But the thing is, you'll eat so fast to where by the time your stomach actually registers to your brain that you're full, you're, you're back up here yes. already. Yes. You've, and you've overdone it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the only time I will eat or purposely eat fast is when I'm in a surplus. If I'm trying to gain weight and put on size, then mm -hmm. it will behoove you to eat quicker because you'll get full less quick. Right. Um, but if you're trying to lose weight and you're hungry, it, you want to just scarf it. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. I'm not eating as much as I have been. I want this food and I want it now. But if you just slow down, you're, you're about to eat, you're gonna eat enough, you're gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. There's no reasons to, to feel like you need to inhale your food. If you take the time, you chew it, and you eat it like a, at a normal speed, like a free man, I like that, you're gonna feel fuller. The more, there's actually, that was a, wasn't that like an old timey thing where they told you to chew a certain amount of time before you swallowed? I had somebody ask me that shit one time. Really? That's how slow I used to eat. They were like, they was like, do you, do you count them as, I was like, no, they were, but it was like, they were, mm -hmm. what, they was, what, what did he say? It was a coach from my college, he was like, he was like, you eat methodically. Mm. I was like, do I? Cause I'm just eating, right. that's how I eat. But I was like, I guess kind of, like I don't count how many times I chew my food, but it has to have a certain feel before I, like I cannot, like how I've seen like big bodybuilders, like they're sort of, I've counted, <laughs> one, two, three, swallow. Yeah. And I'm like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> it's one, two, three. Ain't no way. And then you swallow with your water. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. There's, and then what that does on the inside for most people. Now, there are people that are always going to be accepted as a rule. They can do that shit and process the food just like I do chewing it, however many times I chew it. But for the most part, you're going to put a lot of stress on your stomach yes. because you haven't broken it down already like it's a team it's a team effort you got saliva you got you got your chewing you got the swallowing you got the way it's contracting it down uh, it's a lot of stuff going on if you skip in one of the main parts in the beginning, <laughs> you're gonna make it harder for it's like it's like bro like and you're like why am i so damn bloated all the time bro we still trying to digest shit from monday it's friday give us a break like mm -hmm. help us out yes that's a yeah and not only that, but if you're if you find that you're eating a certain type of food and getting bloated from that food, mm. it's probably a food you're intolerant to. So if you're if you've started a new diet and you've noticed some bloat or you notice some discomfort, especially after eating a particular meal or a particular food, mm -hmm. you might have an intolerance to it and you might not need to be eating that. I cannot process sweet potatoes or um, oatmeal, which is great oatmeal? for oatmeal. Yeah, <laughs> great for bodybuilding. I'd so. be good. I'd probably be dead. I'm, I eat oatmeal literally every day, every day. Um, for me, I'm actually kind of glad that I'm intolerant to it because I'm a super picky eater and I cannot do that texture. Really? I am probably the world's pickiest eater eater ever. Um, I eat spinach as a vegetable. That's it. And when I'm in prep doing and need vegetables, it's spinach. I get all of my other nutrition from my supplements because I know I'm horrible. It's blurry, there we go. Um, I'm horrible with my micronutrition, mac micronutrition. So, that might help. Um, <laughs> so, but like I just, there's so many foods I don't like and it's so, most of it is a texture thing. I love eggs, so I'll do eggs all day, but oatmeal. What kind of texture, like bothers you? It's. My wife is the same way, she, won't, she cannot eat mashed potatoes at all. See, I can do mashed potatoes, I can't do like sour cream, guacamole it's the baby food texture almost mm -hmm. that mushy but 
it can't like it can't have lumps in it either because if it's mushy with lumps that's even worse like that i think that's what oat, oatmeal is like the weirdest it's like mush with like chew to it mm. oh it's one of the, honestly the first two times the first two times i had to eat oatmeal it barely had any water like i made it as thick as possible i was like okay this that's is what I do. this isn't bad and then i tried it as thin as possible and it's so horrible i can't do thin as possible like my stepmom she uh, she did she did what's on the instruction. Mm. So it was like one pack of oatmeal and a cup of water. I was so like, it, yeah, that's how my dad did it. I, I want soup when I want soup. I don't want soup from oatmeal. I don't like soup. I don't want to drink my my food. Oh, well, I'm not going to eat soup now. Well, but I'm not going to eat. Do choose soup? That's true. It's soup. I don't want soup for breakfast. That's true. Okay, I get that. Like I do five packages of oatmeal with very minimal water every day, but it's because. It's super easy to do anywhere. Yes, and that's another big thing with meal prep is convenience. Mm -hmm. We all have a life. I, I've been in the military. I know people in um, emergency services, in the healthcare industry, you name it, oil field, construction. I know somebody who works in that field and can eat their meals. So yeah. your, your excuse of I can't eat my food is only because you're choosing not to. Excuses are only us giving ourselves a way out of something we said we were going to do. Has no effect on the other person. Right. So you can, if you really, really, really want to. Mm -hmm. You can. It is fully possible. Cold food. There's plenty of different types of food. I've eaten. I don't know how much cold rice and chicken in the past seven years. Um, cold eggs. Um, I can't eat cold. I can't eat it starting out. That's what's weird. And I eat so slow that it'll get cold. I was about to It might be like room temperature, but like if I, if in my head I know it was supposed to be warm, I, it won't, it won't compute. Well, I will say this, in off season, I am that way. It has to be like burn the roof of my mouth almost oh, hot. I want it, no, I want it like fresh out the oven, you cut it up and let me eat it. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes time for prep, that switch yeah, flips yeah. and it does not matter. That food is a goal, it is fuel, and it is going down regardless. Oh, it's functional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it no functional. longer, yeah, it no longer becomes a, I'm eating because I'm a human and I need to eat. It's, mm -hmm. this is a job and I'm getting it done. This is a bicep, this is a lap, mm -hmm. this is a trap, this is a quad, this is, I don't care. Yeah, and that's another thing with meal prep that people, y'all are looking at, if y'all are looking and watching bodybuilders meal prep, we have such a specific goal we don't care if I literally eat chicken four to five times a day. Chicken and jasmine rice, four to five times a day for the past seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. And eggs and some beef. But that's literally been my diet. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. It does not bother me. If you're somebody that needs different foods, eat them. Eat them. And meal prep doesn't have to be this strenuous thing. Like you said. Especially if you're not, if you're not a bodybuilder, like if you're not finna get on stage in damn near nothing and be judged, because that is literally what's going to happen. And I mean judged very critically. Yes. If you're not doing any of that shit, it doesn't make any sense to be that technical. And my biggest thing is too, is, I hope I'm using this right, I think I am. Continuity, right? So, okay, and I always use the same reference because I use quinoa as an example, right? So, because quinoa about 10 years ago, like when we were kids, I've never heard of quinoa before. Yeah, before. I had So, either. okay, so I use quinoa because that's like the big, when the health craze kind of, mm -hmm. it was real popular, it did, right? It did pop out, yeah. If you hate quinoa, don't ever eat it again. Yeah, you don't have to. But I don't, I'm like, I don't give a damn what they tell you the health benefit. If you don't like it, you're not going to keep eating it. So I always look at it like this. Can you keep doing this? If you're 35 now, can you still be doing this at 70? It's, it makes no sense to start doing it now because you're I, not going to keep it up. And, and eventually, when you go off that shit, your gonna body's going to be like, I've been waiting on your ass. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go, and you're going to be worse than when you start. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, like, if you can't maintain it, there's no point. Start it. Exactly. And to your point of if you don't like it, don't eat I despise fish. Despise fish. I refuse to eat fish. Is it fish or seafood, period? Seafood, period, sorry. Okay. All of it. No seafood. If it comes out of the ocean, I'm not eating it. <laughs> period. <laughs> and you know what? I have turned pro and never eaten a bite of fish. You don't have to eat 
it just because it's one of the foods that everybody's eating. What you have to do is you have to find foods that work for you mm -hmm. that are in that healthy parameters that you enjoy eating and you do it in appropriate proportions to your goals. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be complicated recipes. It's leftovers. Like, that was the best thing you've ever told me. I'm telling everybody that now. You want a meal prep? Sunday night when you cook your, cook your dinner for your family, cook a couple extra chicken breasts. It's Make some over. extra rice. It's just over. Throw it in some Tupperware and tomorrow you take it out, you cut some of it up and you eat it. Make a, a chicken salad. Make a you know you can get super creative when you just have a, a tub of chicken. And it's mainly what ninety percent of American families have been doing for eon. The only like with me, I don't consider it a real meal prep if the shit ain't measured. Yes, and it's agreed. not. And I mean like measured as far as like it's actually weighed. Right. And it's calculated based off of you know how many grams of this you need to have a day and how many grams of that a, and the total caloric yeah. intake if it ain't doing that to me in my opinion which is it's mine i'm gonna be i'm let me start off with that in my opinion that's not a meal prep i agree you just eat leftovers yes you have meat leftovers because you cooked or you cooked it and you did this and thing. yeah and you, you might be cool. measuring it out to or like separating it out into portions mm -hmm. but if you're not weighing it i weigh every meal i eat yeah Every meal is weighed because I meal prep. Mm -hmm. When I'm tag taking a week off from my meal prep, I don't weigh anything. Right. But I also, I have weighed so many things, I can really get close on eyeballing four to five ounces, six ounces of chicken, and mm -hmm. 100 to 200 grams of rice. But I've been but doing- it's not gonna look different. No, it's not. And so once you've figured out kind of what portion sizes you need, and you've looked at them a few times, it just becomes second nature, and you don't have to be to a T with it. You don't have, it's not something that should be stressful. It's something that you should be able to incorporate into your life and continue to live and be healthy. Right. We've, the American diet has just, it, it, it's, it's junk food. It's a, it's 12 year old people's not food. Like 12, that's what I, like the average person eating out all this fast food, I don't care if Subway says it's healthy. I don't care, like yes, in a pinch, find something healthy at a restaurant, but the amount of extra stuff, even at Chick-fil-A, I love Chick-fil-A, and if I'm in prep, I'm going to Chick-fil-A and getting their grilled chicken nuggets if I need chicken. That's what I'm doing. But even those have extra flavoring. Mm -hmm. They have stuff added to make it more addicting and to Sodium. taste better. Sodium's not, they do have a lot of extra sodium, but, Sodium for people that don't work out at all, that's yes. bad. Yes. Sodium for people that work out, perfect. And sodium it stops is, cramps. It does, and you don't need to cut sodium, and you don't need to increase sodium. Just don't just eat and salt your food. Mm -hmm. Like eat seasoned food with salt. It's, yeah, it's okay. I promise. Don't eat bland food. Yeah. If you're not if you're not a bodybuilder, well, if even you're not body, on we, prep, yeah, y'all. I don't eat, cut salt. The sauce, the sauce craze with y'all. Oh my God, that, yeah. that saved so many of y'all. Oh yeah. Man. Yes. Man, I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> Man, what's, what's that stuff? Flavor, is it Flavor God? There's Flavor God. Um, there's Mrs. a lot now. Um, Mrs. Dash, mm -hmm. and there's a couple others, but like I, most of my, I use Taco Bell Mild. It's mm -hmm. zero cal. Hot sauce? All the hot, hot sauces. Hot sauce is working. gonna be great. Um, there's a lot of sugar-free barbecue sauces that are actually pretty yeah, bomb. The one with that, the one black on it, and then you've mm -hmm. got sugar-free salad dressings. Yes, um, yeah. Hughes. Is that him? I think it's Hughes. It's not Baby Ray's, I think it's Hughes. Yeah, it's not but yeah, Ray's. he makes um, sugar-free barbecue sauces and dressings. You can literally get lower calorie stuff and it tastes good. You don't have to, it, you don't have to cut all that stuff out. Yeah, you don't have it's, to suffer through. It's moderation. It really just do a little less. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you'll want a little less or you won't want something that's bad at all. De <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day about a detox because they're trying to <laughs> oh, oh, <God. laughs> eat healthy. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, I don't judge anybody. There's so much information out there that just y'all don't know and that's why we're doing this yeah i want to be able to tell y'all the truth because a lot of people are just pushing stuff to sell stuff yeah like we said last time the marketing team is yeah they are killing it they don't are, they're killing it 
Don't buy a detox. For no reason. Don't buy a detox, period. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. If you've been eating junk food, you want to detox from that, you want to feel good, you want to get all that out of your system, stop eating all the junk food for stop. 30 days. And just stop. Just stop. Okay. And you'll, mm -hmm. Detox your house. Detox your... You can det detox your refrigerator. Yes. Detox your cabinets. Mm -hmm. Detox your house. Yes. Detox your you house. Literally. And I promise you, after a couple of weeks of eating that clean food, the cravings will slow. And then there's also you can blueberries are an amazing sugar craving fix, and mm -hmm. they're great for you. Keep blueberries frozen, fresh doesn't matter. Just eat a handful of blueberries if you're really wanting that candy bar or something. And then if you're still having really bad sweet cravings, your sodium might actually be low because lack of salt actually will cause you to crave sweet things. Mm. So if you're having really bad sweet cravings and you can't figure out why, and maybe you're not even a super sweet eater, your so your sodium might be low. That explains a lot. Really? I mean, like super like sweet. But then the other thing with me specifically, I got cavities I need to get taken care of. Mm. So I like didn't eat it sweet for like probably like nine years straight, like at all, because it would send me to like so, yeah that. Mm -hmm. But then I found Sour Patch Kids and I figured out which ones I can eat. <laughs> yeah, kiss that shit. Goodbye. They're they're right next to the bed. Hey. I'm not a bodybuilder, so you know I'm with y'all. Hey, I'm not here. I'm, I'm, here. I'm in off season. I confession, I had I think it was like 13 chocolate chip cookies last night while I played my video games. I mean, they're only like this big, but uh, Albertsons, they sell this $5 case. I don't even know how many's in there. <laughs> I need to 13 of them are gone. Uh, well, it was gone in two days, and I think there's like 25 or 30 cookies in there. It's all right. It's, it's all right. But anyway, um, it added to the, arm pump. the whole right. point is, yeah, it did. Um, we're all human, and we all do shit. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Apologize for cussing. I'm not normally a cusser, but um, I am um, so sorry. Um, Don't worry, I put the whole not for children thing on here. So okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> but even I love sweets and I love eating all the good, amazing food. I love food. But when I eat my good, clean food, I don't crave junk food at all. It's, it's literally a choice of somebody being like, well, do you want to eat this instead? Or do you want to come out to eat? Or, hey, we're having pizza. Would you like some? Or something like that. Where I'm like, okay, yeah. But, but I want my problem, chicken, yeah. my rice. Mm -hmm. Like, even today, I didn't want to eat my chicken and rice, but I was craving my chicken and rice. Mm. That's, a, that's my favorite. It's like, oh, I want the healthy food, but like, I don't want the healthy food. So you do it long enough, you're not gonna want it as much, and then you can kind of do it in small doses so you're not gonna overdo it, and you can still have it in your life and be healthy. This is not, being healthy, average healthy. I'm not talking anything crazy, just average healthy. Not, not triathlete, no, not, not no gym three to four days runners, a week. Not all that. Yeah, like three to, day, three to four days a week, you're active and you eat well. I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? <laughs> the amount of help. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long week. Um, when, uh, when you're not trying to do anything crazy, you're just going to the gym a couple of times a week, you can eat and not deprive yourself. Right. It's it's not a, oh my gosh, I cannot have anything sweet. I mean, maybe to start off, yeah, it's a really great idea to cut sugar and you know eat, not eat certain things that you really want to eat for like 30 to 45 days. That's creating a habit. You have to create a habit because you're changing your whole lifestyle so that you can change being healthy. So, um, yeah, cut it out at first. Clean out your whole house. Detox from it and. If you have children, guess what? They can eat healthy stuff too. Start there. Start there. That's I, how you show them you really care about it. Exactly. If you're healthy, you want your kids to be healthy too. Mm -hmm. Not giving them... Significant other? Yes, significant others. Your, whoever lives with you in your household can benefit. Mm -hmm. Your children don't, aren't being deprived if you don't give them sh sugary cereal in the morning. They'll live. Kids love scrambled eggs and toast. It's not that like, 
it's not that hard to get your whole family. I know it sounds like it and people are like, oh, you don't have a whole family. I am one of 11 kids and one of my really good friends, she's a tough, she's a tough mother, a mother of six. Um, she meal preps for her entire family, all of her children, and she fosters kids, mm -hmm. and she does Tough Mudder competitions, and she uh, works, and her husband works. So first off, yes you can. All of her children are the most happy, healthy kids. They don't care. They're eating scrambled eggs and toast for breakfast. They have chicken and mac and cheese for lunch. You know, it's just the processed things. Get it out of your life and then use it as just a treat every once in a while. You know where that shit comes from? With the kids anyway? Hmm. That little box that they sit in front of all the damn time. A little box in their hand. Yep. It doesn't come from them just wanting it. Mm -hmm. It comes from marketing. It comes from when they walk through the stores. So like me, for the longest, my oldest child is 17 by the way. I probably went, I've gone 90% of her life without ever walking like with her ever, without her coming to the store with me. Yeah. It's like that whole like, I want this, no. Mm -hmm. So like when I go get stuff, I won't take them with me. So, so then I don't have to deal with that whole, so they never see it. Right. And then now, if you have them read a thing called a book, they don't see all them damn commercials, they don't see all that bullshit Jump. that tells them, hey, this is da 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 Because that high pitch shit, it goes in here and they just, they want it because of that. Like, and for instance, friends. with our kids, my my wife, so my so our, my youngest son, mm -hmm. super picky, right? Right. Super picky. Now, she cooks stuff, you would think that Gordon Ramsay dropped that shit off at the house. And I was like, I told you, you just have to give it to him. Like, he will eat it. Like, he, it, he's like looking at it, it's like, all right, brother, you ain't got no choice. Mm -hmm. If I take the choice away, you're not going to starve, so not yeah. going to out. Or me, being the old school type dad I am, you're not going to not eat that. And you're not getting up until it's gone. So. so, I'm a super big eater and have been since I was a small child. And that's how my parents did it for a couple times. It was, you're not getting up until it's eaten. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was getting so stubborn to the point that, okay, I would sit there for hours. I didn't care. I'm I'm um, super stubborn. Oh, it was bad. Yeah, I can hold my breath out fast out that shit. I didn't care. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care either. Um, I would sit there until it was like bedtime. Um, so then it would get put in the refrigerator and I'd have to eat it cold in the morning before I got my breakfast. Mm -hmm. You know what? I can politely eat anything. I might not like it, but I can politely eat anything. And you know what else? I, my mom was a stay-at-home mom because there was eight of us. Um, now 11, but when I was little. And we had to go to the store with her because we were all so young. Right. She didn't have a choice. Right. So we had to walk past all that stuff. And you know what? For a long time, my mom gave it to us. And then there was, um, there was some point where she stopped. I don't really necessarily remember what it was or why. Kids don't remember that type of shit. They don't notice it. And guess what? I also didn't care that I was getting healthy food. It was still food and it tasted good. But at some point she did switch and when we walk by the cereal and I'd be like, oh, I want some Fruit Loops. She'd be like, no, we're not getting those today. Guess what? Okay, no big deal. Adult made a decision. I'm the child. I'm perfectly okay. I was denied nothing. My parents are amazing and I love them greatly. It, not giving junk food to your kids is not a punishment to them. You're helping them develop amazing life skills that are going to benefit them in the future and let them be even greater individuals and healthy individuals. And now you're gonna be healthy with them, so you're gonna be healthy and able to get up and down off the floor with your grandkids and possibly great grandkids. And you'll still be around to see them. And you'll be around to see them and be able to move around and not be stuck in a, in a wheelchair or in a nursing home where you can't do anything and take care of yourself because you've set yourself up for longevity and long-term success and you've set them up with the habits and you've been the example so they can follow in turn and build better and healthier generations. Yeah, because the way like, okay, so like, a little bit of background, so it, like, I say probably like three, four years ago, so me and my wife were separated for like two and a half, three years, so we just recently got back together like almost like two years ago, so with me being on my whole weightlifting, trainer, da -da 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 kick, whatever, my kids see me doing that, 
I've never pushed it. I don't push nothing on my kids at all, except for morals and stuff like stuff like that. Right. Like morals and manners. Like these stuff are like your, that. these like, are the things I yeah. teach you, and now you make your choice. Yeah. So like certain like certain Critical non-negotiables. Yeah. Like yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Saying excuse me, stuff like that. All right, cool. But like as far as like. I ran track, you gotta run track. Right. I play basketball, you, I don't give a damn. I don't care. Like, right. I'll, if you wanna be a cook, cool. They got culinary schools, they got mm -hmm. artists, they got artists to the Dallas, they got whatever. So, but like, just them seeing me do it, they have opted into, I don't want that, that's not healthy. I hear them say that now. Awesome. Like, my daughter will be like trying to do push ups that's out of nowhere. I'll just come home and be like, she's like, Daddy, look at how Show them, like, so, and I never said anything. I just, you just do, do it. They watch what you do. They watch. Good or bad. So give them a good example to follow. It's yeah. not that hard. And it's like childhood diabetes. You don't want to play around with that shit. Mm -hmm. Like for what? Like why? Because at the end of the day, they're not going to the store by themselves. They're not bringing that food in the house. So they're eating whatever you're bringing in the house. So act like they are. Like think about your child. So I, this, 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 this is the way I tell people. If you treated your child like what they are, which is the biggest investment you will ever make in your life, we'd have a lot better human beings. People treat investment properties, they treat classic cars and things of that nature or an investment bank account with more thought than they do their child. Yep. I don't see it like that. Yeah, I agree. My, I have, I think we're working on I have like 10 or 11 nieces and nephews and a sister that's currently pregnant with another one. Um, but they all know I'm, I'm the healthy one. Mm -hmm. they, they don't come and ask me for snacks. Um, they they want to do push-ups with me when we go on family vacations. Mm -hmm. they, when they know I am the gym person. They're all fairly young, but the, I know they're watching. My three-year-old nephew asked me how to do push-ups. Like, they're watching us. They know. Mm -hmm. And why can't we make those decisions for us? Why, why are we not investing in ourselves like we're investing in investment properties and classic cars? Why, why are you going to spend so much time and energy and effort and money on, on your business or something you really enjoy, your hobby, your passion, and but you're going to let... To even see it happen, or not be able to enjoy it. Yes, and your body, and not even take care of your body or your mind to continue to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's all about the longevity. Like nobody wants to die early. Yeah, there's this whole like, oh, I don't care, whatever, blah blah. Okay, yeah. cool, tough guy, fun stuff. But we want to be healthy. We want to last. We want to be able to do the stuff that we enjoy doing, and we want to be able to be functional while we do it. Mm -hmm. You don't. Nobody wants to be a burden in their old age. So why are we? Why is it such? Why is there such an excuse to put ourselves last? Mm -hmm. Why? Why are we not putting ourselves first? Because if we don't put ourselves first and our physical health first, we can't put anybody else first because we're not going to be there anymore. Yeah, you're not capable of doing it. Yeah, you what? can't put everybody else first and just neglect yourself so long and expect to still be there for forever. Like there's, so like I used, I use an, I use an analogy, right? When it's a parent and a child, okay? So you got a sandwich. Mm -hmm. So how much do you give to your child? How much do you take for yourself? So most of the time, most people, they'll be like, well, if I said you had to split it 80-20, how would you view it? Most people, like, most people that you're going to talk to, they're going to say, well, I'm going to give my child 80, I'm going to keep 20. Okay, <clears throat> okay. so how y'all going to eat tomorrow? Because you ain't going to have enough energy to do shit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Your child's going to be full of energy, but you can't function. Yep. So y'all just going to wait till tomorrow to start it. Me, I'm going to take 80, I'm going to give you 20. You can survive about 20 because you're this big. <laughs> yep. But now I have enough energy to go get another sandwich tomorrow. Yeah. And that's how you have to look at it. Like you have to take care of you so you can be around and take care of everybody else. If you don't take care of you, how the hell do you take care of everybody else? Exactly. And then don't be like, and don't be a preacher. Like don't be a, don't be an inactive preacher. So it's like, you talk a good game. It's like, you do this, you do this, you do this. But then when I look at what you're doing, you don't do that. 
you telling me to do all this shit, but mm -hmm. you're not doing it yourself. It's like, I'm going to follow what you're doing. I ain't right. going to follow what you're telling me to do. Exactly. That's just and the whole do as I say, not as I do thing. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Not at all. And people that think it still does, I don't get because it doesn't matter what you say. Actions speak louder than words, period. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what what we're talking about, what subject, your actions will tell me way more than your words will ever tell me. Every time. Every time. And why can't we put action to our words and follow through with our want for health and our want to be better? It's, it's, it should, fitness and health should not be a, I don't have time for that. It yeah. should be a, this is part of my routine. This is part of my day. You have to sleep to survive. You have to eat to survive. You have to go to the gym to be, or you have to be active, not necessarily a gym. Mm -hmm. You have to be active to be healthy. So you sleep every night. And if you're not sleeping, you're doing yourself a major disservice. And that's going to be a whole other episode. Um, but you eat, or you should be. And if you're under eating, you're probably ca the cause of your weight gain. Because under eating is just as big of a cause of weight gain as overeating is. Most of y'all aren't eating enough. Yes. And if you're not eating, if you are a grown adult eating less than 100 grams of protein a day, you are wrong. Protein is what you need to help burn body fat and to do all of the things that you want to do in the health industry. Start with your protein. If your protein is lacking, one gram per body pound, bare minimum. Bare minimum one and a half to two if you're trying to put on some size um but start with one gram a day one gram of protein per day per body count and or as close as you can get as close as you can get which so when i i do take when you count protein do you include your amino acids or do you just go off of your whole foods i definitely don't count them mm -hmm. i probably don't count a lot of shit you know I was, I was just curious. I was just curious. I was just curious. I'm still team. I don't count. Star lifestyle. I ain't counting nothing. I ain't weighing nothing. Hey. Nothing. I'm going to bang it out in the gym and try and fix it. I'm telling you right now. Don't follow what I do. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't, don't, don't follow this lifestyle. Because. Don't follow what I do because. Right? So. So. I've been doing fitness do in like. Now, do. Do. <laughs> no. Do you. <laughs> Don't do what I do. I'm gonna tell you why. Because, so, I got, so like I've been an athlete, and I was an athlete anyway, whatever, like when I was young, right? So, I got into health and all that other stuff when my oldest brother passed away when I was 14. So that's June 1st, 2000. So it's September 8th, 2022. So for the last 22 years, I've been focused on health and fitness I haven't like done the stuff that I'm doing now. Right. But like I've studied health and fitness on every type of thing because my whole mindset was, and my, my brother had Prater Willie syndrome. So long story short on that, the signal from your stomach to your brain that tells you you're full mm -hmm. does not exist. Mm -hmm. So he lived, he was 23 when he passed away. So for 23 years he lived his life like he was starving. Not hungry, starving. Like, and I mean, as he's eating, I'm still starving. I'm still starving. I'm still starving. Yeah. And so, with everything that I've learned so far over the last 22 years, I know for a fact, had I known that then, or at least a piece of it, I know I could have saved him. So anybody that I meet that doesn't even have a tenth of something like that going on that they're trying to fight, mm -hmm. I got you, don't worry about it. Yeah. But with that being said, over the last 22 years, I've done trial and error with myself. So I know my body. Zoom in, fix yourself, man. Thank you. So, like, that's why I say don't do what I'm doing because it's just like trying to follow somebody that's in off season. Yeah. That just so happens to still look lean. Mm -hmm. And you're following what they're eating every day. And you're following what they're doing every day, but you don't go out there in off season and well, you, don't need to be. you shouldn't be following what anybody else is doing every day, period, ever. Um, and I'm going to touch on this real quick. When professional bodybuilders, mm. I'm a professional bodybuilder. I'm an IFBB pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm new at that, but I know plenty of people and I've been around this industry long enough. 
if you are an IFBB pro athlete, especially top tier, if you are winning pro shows or headed to an Olympia or trying to get there at your, that level, mm -hmm. don't follow their workouts. No. They're posting it, yeah, that's great. And if you wanna look at form and you wanna like understand the movement, great. Do not follow their workouts. They are not meant for you. They're not meant for me. They're not meant for him. They are meant for that specific athlete, their weak spots, their strong points, when their show is and what they're building for. Their lifts are not for your foundation. If you are new to this, five years or less, you're still building probably your foundation yeah. or you're still working on it. Maybe you've got the poles, but you're not decorating the inside of the house with Louis Vuitton and Gucci things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm basic. <laughs> so basic. Um, oh, you're not. Anyway. You're specifically not basic, actually. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Tug on the hair. Yeah. Um, basic. <laughs> but. All right. They're, they're, not, they're not posting those workouts to help you. Mm -mm. They're posting them because that's their job. Y'all are going to like all them videos. And you're going to like them. And that's fine. And you're going to pay for it. And, yes. Which I'm not mad at. No. And that's Please great. Please sign me up. Same. Um, but watch them for form, not for their workouts, not yeah. for their meals. None of that stuff is for your day-to-day -day person. None of that stuff is for anybody outside of like pro-level athlete. Mm -hmm. It's... It's designed. Still might not even work for another pro. It, exactly. Exactly. My weak points are not other pros' weak points, and my workouts are designed to me and to bring up those weak points. Like I want slightly bigger biceps. My triceps are doing good, but I'm working a little bit. I want to bring up my bicep a little more before I grow the rest of my arm. So my arm day is a little bicep heavy in certain areas. My legs are my weak point. So I have my leg day broken up into two days where I do a quad and a hamstring glute day. Not everybody needs that. You, you don't probably, do you do two leg days? Depends on the month, honestly. Oh, no. I might sometimes, <laughs> I might not do a fucking leg day for Okay, we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna two, talk about it. Yeah, don't follow me, I'm telling you, yeah. don't follow me. I don't do it. So. Don't, don't do that. But, but seriously, these, they're good for learning how to do an exercise, but if you're following anybody's split, split or diet. their routine, their diet, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're doing yourself a disservice because these, and, and you know what? Anything else supplement wise that they're doing is not meant for you either because your body is different. Oh God, and please don't Do ever follow their cycles. Not follow anybody's cycle, period. Don't ever do that. Period. Their cycle protocol, please don't do that. Don't. Please, don't ever it do is, that. If you wanna do them, you don't wanna do them, I'm not here for that part because yeah. That's I don't see shit wrong with them, me personally, because uh, first of all, uh, what's the shit called? Albuterol, that like the most used asthma medication is a steroid. So if everybody that had a little steroid comments and whatever, most of y'all are probably on steroids because a lot of people have asthma. So when you that 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 is a steroid for y'all to uh, for y'all to be like all oh, steroid this that and the third that's a steroid, okay? And uh, let's see, uh, birth control plays your hormones. So all that, you know, I mean, yeah, like, so y'all take that shit. It, that does us a more of a disservice than a service. But I'm just saying, like, y'all pop, like, people that pop Plan B pills oh, yeah. and all the other shit, like, y'all playing with y'all hormones anyway. So this is very true. Y'all are that all of that and so all that judgment. All that high, I don't have all that high processed food. All that um, all that high processed food messing with all your hormones as well. So but. but they, but their, their cycles for the most part, especially now because of all the deaths and shit like that, they're going to have their blood work done super regularly and that shit is spe specifically tailored to the, if a motherfucker hands you a diuretic that was given to them by a doctor as your coach, punch them in the fucking mouth and don't ever fucking be coached by them again. Don't take shit that was prescribed for somebody else. But I, it, it, the fact that I even have to say that shit is is, is mind boggling. Well, but that recently happened to somebody that I fucking know, and that shit pissed me off so bad. And the honestly, the hardest part is because it's illegal. There's so little reliable good information, mm -hmm. so people just have to listen to whoever they listen to. Mm -hmm. 
and because if you Google it, you get every answer oh under God. the sun. Please don't go so, that shit. Yes, it's it's a very hard subject. Mm -hmm. It really is. So my advice always to anybody, find a quality coach. Mm -hmm. A quality coach. A coach, look at their athletes. If they don't have their athletes posted, ask for pictures of their athletes. Ask for their con athletes' contacts. Message some of their athletes. See how they coach. See what they, figure out what kind of coach you need and interview them. Figure out if it's, if it's somebody that's good. Don't just go for the cheap one. You gotta figure out who's a real coach and who went online and paid for some certifications. Getting your personal training certifications is an open book test that you just pay some money for and go online and take. Anybody can... No, it's not. It's not. It well, won. at least not in NASM, it's not. Okay, well, the other one is. Okay, because that shit... No, I think that one's the better one. That shit is monitored like they have a camera over you. Oh, nice. And you have to put all your shit in a bag, hang it on your chair. If you so much as do this towards your bag, they will. Nice. Well, that's good. The one, the ones that I, there's two that I've looked at and they literally in the description before you buy the pack, the study packet, it's like, this is an open book test. Oh, that's just, oh. For like $600, I could be a personal trainer right now. But I'm not a personal trainer because I'm not going to do that game. But mm -hmm. literally just because somebody has certifications or say they have certifications or say that they're a good coach or have put athletes on stage does not mean that they're good, does not mean they're quality, and does not mean they know what they're doing. Research your coach. Research what they're telling you. Research what you're taking. Research what you're doing. Research their athletes. Yes, I... Find out how long their athletes have been with them mm -hmm. and make sure that that coach is who had something to do with them looking like that. Because they might have got that motherfucker, that motherfucker might have had good ass genetics anyway, and they just got them and did a show with that motherfucker, and they really didn't prep them for like nothing. Maybe three weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months. That motherfucker was going to like that on that stage any damn way. Yep. But they get them, they win at the show, then the coach yep. takes all the glory, like, yeah, I did that. And then you find out, bro, he was training for 12 years before he got with you. Mm -hmm. you he got with you like two months before the show. Yep. You know, should do that. Message their athletes. If if somebody ever messaged me about a coach I was working with or tagging, I am not going to be a. You can ask me anything. What about this coach? How do they do this? How do they? I will happily tell you how my. I research every coach. I am not paying my hard earned money for somebody who's not going to be attentive, mm. knows what they're talking about, and I'm paying for knowledge I do not have. If I do not feel your knowledge is greater than the, me going to research what I'm doing, you're not qualified, sorry. If I can go find your knowledge on Google with a one search, you're not qualified to coach me because you're not gonna take me anywhere. You're there for my money and you're there for an easy job, I don't know. But research your coach if you're gonna go that route. See how many of them travel to? Yes. How many of them go to the athletes' shows? Mm -hmm. And some of that, yes, is go when you get to the, the higher level coaches, a lot of them only will travel if you pay for it because they have so many high level athletes, mm -hmm. which is understandable. That is fine. But if you're not a super high level athlete and your coach isn't a high level coach, a lot of the, not lower grade, but you're more typical for non lower tier low thank you lower tier coaches um jesus they might not travel yes they will tra sometimes they'll travel right um you can ask them though and typically they'll tell you in their pricing yeah i'll travel and if they're going to only ask you to pay for a little bit of their travel that is a good coach mm -hmm. or if they're not if they're like yes i'm going to be at your show especially if it's a national level show and your coach is just going to show up because he's your coach bravo thank you applaud you greatly yeah even if he did even if you feel like you might not have a chance in hell of winning mm -hmm. but he's still gonna show up because it's like i have i'm gonna see you through this i'm not gonna leave you hanging and high and dry or be trying to FaceTime this shit to you or like you send me some videos and I text you back what you probably need to do Like nah, I'm gonna be in the hotel room the Morning of I'll be at the show. I'll be backstage that type of stuff 
even if they don't do that for you, but you know they will, mm -hmm. or they have done that for, for their athletes, because I mean, at the end of the day, it's still one person. Exactly. They might have 30 athletes. Yeah. So I mean, mean, they might not be able, able, be able to be at everybody's show, but at least if they're willing to travel to some, like if they never show up to anybody's show, even a high level people. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or they only show up to their high level popular people. That's what I was about to, that was my next. There are a lot of high level coaches out there that only show up to their popular athlete shows. Mm -hmm. They'll put a bunch of other athletes at that show. So they're there with their popular athlete and have everybody else but they're not really there for you. If you if you have a coach and you do not feel that any response is specific to what you said or your feedback or your check-in and it's very generic, fire them. Or it takes a long time to get the damn yes. feedback. Yes, if you're not getting feedback, I mean, some coach, again, every coach is different. A lot of them have yeah, parameters like the for their responses mm -hmm. and, yeah. and yes, give them their, their allotted time, their allowed time, but there are certain, if, if I send check-ins, okay, example, I've, I sent check-ins to a coach the day before my show, posing in front of my coach for the first time, that's fine, critiques my posing and said, oh, in your pictures, I noticed you do this when you do your, your side chest, we need to move it like this so it'll look better. The day of the show? The day before the show. So, I was... In the 20 weeks I was in prep. Holy shit. So if things yeah. like that, mm. those are the things. If your coach, Last minute. Mm -hmm, if your coach is not looking at your pictures and critiquing your, hey, how's my posing? And good, no, like it's it's good or we need to work on this, nothing or, hey, um, it got to be something I need to fix. Yeah, or to a certain extent. Or when you respond and you're like, oh, this week was a little rough, you know, I missed here and here. And you say anything and their response just is your next plan and there's no commentary. Your coach doesn't care. Your coach is sending you something because you're you're a number. It's probably cookie cutter. Hmm? It's probably cookie cutter. Yes, it's probably is cookie probably cutter. the same shit as athlete number 49 and athlete number 27. Yep. There was a coach for my very first show I used, um, I used him and... Come to find out, I was actually using two coaches. I was using a person, my, I was doing in session training and then I had an online prep coach. Mm -hmm. So like my diet protocol and all that stuff um, for cardio and stuff, he did, but then I trained in, in person with a different trainer who was also a pro. Um, she was looking at the diets I was getting and the feedback and we started talking to a few other of his athletes. It was the same exact diets. Same exact, and we, I was women's physique, this other athlete was figured. We had the same exact meal plan. He is a very popular coach and known for turning out pros. That doesn't mean anything. Just research your coach, ask the athletes. That's all, that, that, it really is that, that simple. Man, that, yeah. that's crazy. Hey, we live in a crazy world, man. We're 29. Stop making excuses for yourself. Do one small thing this week to get yourself closer to a goal. You'll be thankful, I promise. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. One step. One step at a time. One Don't one overwhelm one. yourself, just one step at a time. You ain't gotta fix it all today. Yep. You took, a, took you years to get here. It's gonna take you years to get back. So be patient, be kind to yourself. Have fun. It'll happen. Yeah, it'll have fun. Exactly. Make it a journey, not a job. Exactly. Jesus Christ, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Fitness should be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a stressor. Especially if you're not getting a paycheck for it. You ain't doing that shit to get paid anyway. You really shouldn't be stressing about mm -hmm. nothing. Cause if you don't, if you miss a meal, what is it really gonna mean in the long run? Like you're not getting on stage yeah. like that. Yeah, and don't stress over missing a meal or eating an extra meal. Don't punish yourself in the gym. The gym is fun. It's not punishment. Enjoy it. Celebrate what your body can do. Don't punish your body for what you 